downtown where you can get a date for 50, 60, 70, even 80% off the original social marketplace price. Now available in paperback at e mirrors Isis, Dark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil Incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get your copy of Isis, Dark Incubus in paperback and e-readers today. Better get the cold slow, y'all, cause we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> Tia Maury says that she hopes to find her Prince Harry as she embarks on her first blind date after her divorce from Corey Hardrick. <laughs> episode of Tia Maori's new reality show, Tia Maori, My Second Act, which is broadcast on WETV, Tia Maori decided to go on a blind date with someone that the producers of the show arranged for her to go out with. And Tia Maori says that she hoped to find her version of Prince Harry as she embarked on this blind date, that, which is the first one she goes on, after her divorce from Corey Hardrick, the man she was married to for the last 15 years. And as she is going on this blind date, she's hoping for an outcome that will be as good as the one that M Meghan Markle wound up on when she went out on the blind date with the F Prince of Wales. Now, this entire situation basically shows how Tia Maori is caught up in her delusions as related to thinking that she's going to find a man on the level of a Prince Harry on a blind date here in America because when it comes to the entire social marketplace it is n impossible to find a man on the level of a Prince Harry in the modern social marketplace. Now Tia Maori wanted to believe that she could go out on a blind date based on the story that she heard about Meghan Markle, who eventually wound up getting involved with Prince Harry and eventually got married and, wound, and they wound up becoming the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And Meghan Markle basically wound up becoming the Duchess of Ratchetness as she wound up getting involved with Prince Harry. Now, what Tio Maury doesn't understand is that a guy like a Prince Harry basically is a once-in-a-lifetime simp, and basically that kind of simp only comes around once a century. I mean, the last time we had a royal simp on the level of Prince Harry was when Prince Edward was around in the early part of the 20th century, and as Prince Edward eventually became King Edward VIII, he became one of the greatest historical simps in history as he basically wound up getting involved with socialite Wallace Simpson and as he got involved with socialite Wallace Simpson in an adulterous affair, eventually he wound up winding up being forced to abdicate the throne and eventually became went on to become one of the greatest simps in history. And again, this man was a once in a lifetime simp in that he was one, a member of the royal family, and two, was basically a man who had serious issues as related to his relationships with his father and his mother, and that's basically how he wound up on the social marketplace and becoming one of the greatest simps of all time, similar to his descendant, Prince Harry. Now, Prince Harry was the 
great, one of the greatest simps of the 21st century, and basically he is the one in a lifetime simp as related to the royal family, and he has basically come and gone, and Meghan Markle basically wound up snatching him off the market because Prince Harry was in a place where he, one, did not understand his role as a man as related to the, to the royal family, two, did not understand his role as a man in God's order, and three, did not understand how to navigate places like the social marketplace, and because he didn't understand how to navigate the social marketplace, this is how Prince Harry wound up in the social marketplace, being in a place where someone could put him in a situation where they could arrange a blind date for him, and he could go out here and have a blind date with someone as common as Meghan Markle, instead of being involved with someone in royal social circles that would have been a possible better fit for him. That's basically the once-in-a-lifetime fluke that happened as related to, the, to Meghan Markle that led to her becoming the Duchess of Sussex, or uh, as I call her, the Duchess of Ratchetness. She basically wound up in a once-in-a-lifetime situation for the entire 21st century, and that's how she wound up in that situation. And Tia Maori is sitting here believing that lightning can possibly strike twice. However, there's no way for lightning to ever strike twice as related to the social marketplace, as related to women like Tia Maori, because Meghan Markle basically, even though she was a divorced woman who basically got involved with Prince Harry again, this was happening because Prince Harry again did not understand his value as a man, did not understand his role as a man. And again, this beta male basically wound up getting involved with her again because of a once in a century lifetime fluke. And Tia Maori is sitting here believing that this can happen, but this is not going to happen considering what the social marketplace is for older women who are like Tia Maori in their late 40s. For women who are in their late 40s, the social marketplace isn't going to get you a Prince Harry, but it will get you a frog in a pookie. And that's what remains in the social marketplace for women like Tia Maori who don't want to deal with the realities of the entire dysfunctional social marketplace. And as she's on her reality show, Tia Maori, my second act, they, the producers basically set her up on a blind date with a guy who they would basically get to fit the role that they have. And this guy, basically, as he's sitting with her, and she asks, why is she still, why is he still single? He says, dream girls are rare, and you're my dream girl. And that's basically a guy coming off a script. Again, coming off a script to basically be entertainment. And basically, sadly, Tia Maori can't see that this is entertainment. And worse, can't see that this is comedy. It's comedy where the entire audience is basically laughing at her and laughing at her because she's actually sitting here on this blind date thinking that this is a, an actual shot at a relationship when in actuality this is just a script being set up to make her the punchline of a joke because when it comes to a 46 year old woman who has been divorced and has two kids that no guy considers that his dream girl, especially if he's doing very well for himself. No, no guy out here who's doing well for himself in that age range where usually most men are starting to actually establish themselves after they've built themselves up. When a man gets into his late 40s and his early 50s, he's basically in his prime. And as he's in his prime, he knows that he can, doesn't have to deal with older women who have been previously married and have to deal with the baggage that comes with that because the baggage that comes with that just brings you a lot of stress in that this woman basically has gone through a divorce and has all of these issues as related to her self-esteem and self-worth. Moreover, she has issues with her as related to her spiritual connection 
that is still with that other man like Tia Maori has with Corey Hardrick and that she still is spiritually bonded to that man under God and any man who would think to get involved with her would have to deal with the spiritual connection she still has with Corey Hardrick. Moreover, that man would have to deal with the fact that she's got the spirit and DNA of another man inside of her. So that man isn't going to want to, cannot be able to, again, parabon with that woman or connect or remain connect with that woman at all. No, there's no way for that man to be able to have a full relationship with that woman. And that's why most men don't get involved with divorced women who have children by other men because that woman basically still has an emotional attachment to that other man and they don't want to deal with all of that grief as related to that man when they can enter the social marketplace at an established place and find a younger woman who basically has, le has basically no sexual partners or maybe one or two sexual partners and they can get involved with that woman and build their own family and build their own household without having to deal with all the stress and the drama and the baggage of this woman who's already gone through a divorce. So those men are looking at younger women, but Tia Maori is still caught up in the delusion that she can basically have this second act, have this second act where she's thinking that this date went well with this guy, not understanding that this guy basically put up a front from what I was looking at as related to his body language and his facial expressions. And when it comes to guys, they'll put up a front as related to women who will sit there and think that things are going well. And the only thing that's going is that this guy basically isn't looking to be a prince. No, he's looking to be a cad. And he's hoping to possibly get Tia Maori to take her back to her, to his, to her million dollar home or some nice hotel and hope to get her to take off her clothes, drop the skid mark jockey thong, and hope to go out here and get a taste of the waste from the special place and put the carbon rod inside of the atomic waste reactor to participate in some nuclear fusion. And after he finishes again being able to participate in some nuclear fusion, this is where this guy is going to be just go out here and bounce and be like the remainder of the guys that she's going to find in the, in the real social marketplace, which basically are not much because at Tia Maori's age, most of the single men basically are finite. I've found their partners and the only guys out here are the ones with $40, $40 that they're looking to spend hoping that they can get a deal from an older woman and these old pookies who basically live with their mama and hope that they can get the keys to the Buick LeSabre to take a girl out on a date on the weekend. These are some of the guys that are remain in the marketplace. Then there's old Ray Ray, who's basically a security guard working the second or the third shift and he's hoping he can get some time off and borrow $40 from his co-worker, Larry, in hopes that he can go out here and get a, a, a woman at, at like Tia Maori and hope that she will be happy with hopefully getting some a two-piece chicken dinner with a biscuit and an apple pie if she looked all right. He hopes that he can get her that from the Arab red and white chicken place and hope that can lead to him being able to get some draws. And then there's old, then there's Romy Rome, who basically has $45 and is looking to go all out because he knows that his looks ain't that great. So Romy Rome is running around with his MCM jogging suit. And as he runs around in his MCM jogging suit, He's got $45 because he got $5 from his homie, hoping to make the night extra special. And he's hoping that he can offer up some scrump fried rice and some chicken wings or possibly, again, a two-piece chicken dinner. But he's going to go premium by going over to a place like uh, the Church's Chicken or the Bojangles and try to make it an extra special evening. 
and or he's gonna head over to the Wendy's and get a, and hook her up with the with the seven dollar biggie bag with the bacon cheeseburger. I mean, these are the guys who remain in the social marketplace at this point, and this is the reality that they don't want to present on Tia Maori's second act because the realities of Tia Maori's second act is that she's gonna be dealing with the old pookies. Again, sleep still sleeping on the racing car bed with the mattress that's flat as a pancake and still got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comforters on the bed and again, hoping that mama will let him be able to drive her LeSabre and hope to eventually bring the LeSabre back with some gas after he spends the $40. I mean, or old Ray Ray again, looking to get off that second or third shift, hoping that he can go out here with his $40 and be hopefully have some money afterwards. Or Romy Rome, who got the $5 plus the $40. I mean, these are the guys that are out here for Tia Maori. But she's got this idea that she's going to find a, a Prince Harry, a royal prince on that level. No, Tia, that's not the reality of the social marketplace. Because in the social marketplace, high value men don't waste their time with women whose social marketplace value has dropped exponentially. And Tia Maori is still caught up in the delusion, like many feminist indoctrinated women are. And I talk about this in depth in my book, The Woman Crisis, how many women still think that they're young and hot like they were in their 20s, and still think that they can go out here and pull high value men when their social marketplace value has dropped lower than a hundred dollar food stamp without the book and their social marketplace value has dropped 50 60 70 even 80 percent off the original social marketplace value and as their social marketplace value has dropped they are thinking oh i'm gonna still be able to pull the chads and the bryans when in actuality, all you're getting are the Pookies and the Ray Rays. And the whole thing is most of those men out here who are high value aren't wasting their time on a Tia Maori. No, they're not even thinking about her when there's more when there's younger, more attractive women in the social marketplace. And that's what basically makes the second act of Tia Maori's life a comedy at this point. And sadly, Tia Maori can't see herself as the punchline of a cruel joke. A cruel joke being played on her by the producers of the WE TV show, which may basically have this woman buying into a fantasy that does not match the reality for older women who enter the social marketplace once they divorce their husbands and get caught up in, this delu in these delusions of one, still thinking that they are still as attractive as they were back in the day. Two, still thinking that the social marketplace is the same as it was when they were younger. And three, still thinking that they basically are competing on the same level that they did when they were younger. When in actuality, the social marketplace is, is basically completely changed. Again, I go back to my analogy. Again, leaving a marriage is like leaving a Windows 10 computer and <clears throat> downgrading yourself all the way down to Windows ME because when you have a Windows 10 computer, you have the latest technology and when you're in a marriage, you're basically up to speed with your husband because he's keeping you up to speed. But when you leave, the social, when you leave your husband and enter the social marketplace, you basically take a social downgrade that takes you back to Windows ME and worse, as you are older and have an older operating code, you don't know how to compete against those, those younger women who basically have the Windows 10 code and basically understand the rules of the social marketplace, understand how to navigate that social marketplace, and can easily eliminate an older woman as competition can easily eliminate an older woman as her competition because she doesn't know how to move in the social marketplace. And that's where Tia Maori is. And that's where she's running around dealing with guys with gold grills, going and dealing with things like online dating. And now producers are gassing her head up 
basically gassing her head up and setting her up to be this joke because that's what she is in this whole situation. That's what she is, again, with this whole delusion. Again, a delusion I talk about in depth in my books, Why 70% of Black Women Are Single, and a lot of black women have delusions, just like Tia Maori, that they're going to go out here and divorce a husband to find a high-value man, when in actuality the high-value man basically has more choices because he's already established and he's in a mindset and a place similar to that of David Banner, where his head is in the right place. He's in a place where he has had experiences that led to him becoming a leader, and as he's learned how to lead, he knows he's looking for a woman who is looking to follow. And Tia Maori isn't a woman looking to follow when she refused to submit to her husband because of her insecurities about getting older. And that's where she went from deal being with a man in his prime, like Corey Hardrick, who was rising as a star and making millions of dollars, to now having to deal with guys who are only going to spend $40 at best maybe 45 with Romy Rome, if he can get that money from his homies. I mean, that's the, that's the deal that they don't want to talk about on this show, that is gynocentric and female-centered, but the realities of the social marketplace are that as a woman gets older, her social marketplace value drops, and Tia Maori's social marketplace value has dropped to the lowest levels in Bus Downtown, where again, the social marketplace value of the women there drops 50, 60, 70, even 80% off the original social marketplace price. And there are no simps like Prince Harry in Bus Downtown looking to kick the tires of the old bus downs down there. No, there are no Prince Harrys down there. I mean, that's again a once in a lifetime simp that only happens once in a century, similar to Halley's Comet or one of those other phenomenons. I mean, when it comes to a royal simp on the level of Prince Harry, you're not going to get that guy but maybe once a century because that guy is, again, exceptionally rare. It's exceptionally rare to find a guy on that level with those daddy issues or mommy issues and insecurities it's very rare to find a guy on that level. And again, that's an even more wild goose chase than the wild goose chase that many women like Tia Maori go on, on the quest for the good man, the good man that does not exist, because these women will sit there and go on this mad quest on this for this guy who does not exist, and basically they don't understand that you're just being misled by Madison Avenue and Hollywood, and being misled to believe that you can find this so-called good man who meets these unrealistic criteria. And that's what's happening here with Tia Maori. She's being basically caught up in her delusions, caught up in a delusion that she's looking to overcompensate for because she's basically insecure as related to what God has given her. She's basically bought into the doubts of other people who told her she could go out here and do better which is what I talk about in The Woman Crisis, how many feminist indoctrinated women think they can do better than what God has given them. She says that Corey was her first and doesn't understand how blessed she was to actually not be able to have to date until she was 18 years old and have the Most High God basically put a man in front of her, a man who would basically be the one for her. She doesn't know how blessed she was and didn't appreciate the man that God had given her. I mean, when I look at Tia Maori's story of her relationship with Corey Hardrick, she's thinking it's a bad thing, but what she didn't see is how God had basically blessed her with the man that she could be with for the rest of her life and be with this man and basically have only one man's spirit and one man's DNA inside of her and the two of you can become one and pair bond. She doesn't appreciate the opportunities that God has given her to basically have a stable mind. And sadly, because she didn't appreciate those things, what she did was basically listen to feminist indoctrinated women 
who basically are full of the devil. And as she's listened to those women, they have got her buying into a lie that, oh, you can go out here and divorce your husband, graduate from marriage to experience dating, which again is a downgrade because dating is a downgrade. No, when a woman is out here, you want to maintain your chastity and you want to maintain your spiritual integrity and bond with a good husband. And again, bond with a good husband because that basically affects your whole frame of mind and your spirit. But I have to wonder if that if that was all, she looked to compromise this because the Prince Harry could be a code word for white men because when it comes to some biracial and black women, they basically think they can go out here and get the ultimate prize, which basically might show me that Tia Maori wasn't serving the Most High God, who is not a man, but caught up in white supremacy and looked to get with this, hope to find this white man eventually, and hope to find this white man, and that will be her ultimate God, again, like a Prince Harry, and that could possibly be what she thinks is she's going to find, but I look at the whole situation, and again, I can see how she was blessed by God, and God gave her a husband, but she didn't appreciate that husband, and now hopes to, again, go out and experience dating, and is basically thinking that she's experiencing a good thing, even though most of her dates have been disasters, and even with the show putting this together, her whole dating life is going to be a disaster because, again, the only guys remaining in the social marketplace are the ones who aren't going to look to give her a lavish lifestyle. All they're looking, again, for is to give her that $40, hope to get her at the motel, hope to get her to drop the skid mark jockey draws, and hope to say that they went out here and bagged a celebrity and want to brag to their friends, and some of them even want to bring their cell phone camera along so they can say that they've got evidence of getting those draws, and that's the harsh reality that Tia Maori doesn't want to hear because WETV ain't gonna put a guy on there like me who's gonna speak the truth about the, how horrid the social marketplace has been. I mean, it's horrid, it's been horrid since the late 80s when I was a teenager. I mean, it basically has fallen completely apart. I mean, because we've taken one, the father out of the home, two, we've gone out here and we've had super hypergamy as related to the crack epidemic which corrupted the social marketplace, not to mention the unrealistic pictures of relationships that have basically distorted people's minds from Disney princess movies and bad romantic comedies. I mean, women don't, they, they've never had to deal with the harsh realities of the social marketplace and they don't understand what men are looking for. They're still caught up in a fantasy that a Prince Charming is gonna come along but there's no way a simp on that level is coming along because, again, when a man gets into his 40s or like David Banner in his 50s or like myself in their 50s, they, we start to become more seasoned as far back as 25 or so or even 22 or so. And as we become more seasoned, we are not going to be out here looking to deal with women who are dysfunctional and damaged. No, we start to develop our own standards. And as we develop our own standards, we demand better behavior from women. And that's where many women like Tia Maori wind up becoming the 70% of black women who are single because men start to change and they're not the young dumb simps that were a pool that they were a, that guys were a pool of when they were in their teens and early 20s. Now, as men start to turn 25, 26, and start to get in our 30s, we start to start to build ourselves up, and we start to demand, start to have standards of our own outside of a big butt and some double Ds. We start to demand better of ourselves. And again, when it comes to guys like Prince Harry, again, royal simp like that is is again comes once a lifetime in a century, and you are not going to get that guy on a blind date because. Men who have themselves together can go out here and decide who they want to get involved with. And the only guys going out on blind dates are usually desperate simps who have no mouthpiece, have no social skills, no interpersonal skills. These are the guys who are going out on blind dates because they cannot take the lead in and of themselves. And when it comes to guys 
go on blind dates, usually women don't respect those guys because they can't take the lead on their own. And they, since they can't take the lead on their own, they go out here and go out on an arranged date. And again, the woman doesn't respect that because she's expecting this man to take the lead and take the initiative as related to things. And again, this is very different than the family, again, arranging a meeting. A, a family will arrange a meeting and a courtship. And again, that is where both partners know something about each other. As they are told by the family, again, that's completely different. In an, it's an arranged situation, but the whole thing is with a blind date. This is usually done by friends and peers of a person they feel sorry for, and they feel sorry for that guy because that guy cannot get his stuff together. And again, it's not a good place for a man to be in because, again, people are feeling sorry for you, and again, the woman is pitying you, and again, it's not a place where a man can be seen as respected. And again, no man wants to be in a blind date situation because a blind date situation says that that man is pathetic and sends a message that that man is weak. So no man wants to be in a blind date situation. No, a man wants to be in a place where he can be respected and seen as respectable. That's what a man wants when he's in the social marketplace is to be respected. And again, wants to be respected because he does not want to be seen as a joke. But Tia Maori doesn't mind being seen as a joke. And that's why she's not seeing how she's the punchline in this reality show that basically is a comedy where most of these white folks are getting the last laugh on her. Now, if you want to learn how to avoid winding up like Tia Maori in Bus Downtown and being the punchline of a reality show, you can pick up my books, The Woman Crisis and Why 70% of Black Women Are Single in paperback and Kindle format on Amazon.com. And those books will teach you how to identify behavior that can put you in the paradigm of, behave, of failure and basically wind up with you winding up being in a situation where you wind up becoming one of these feminist indoctrinated women who will wind up miserable and single for the rest of their life. And again, this book will teach you how to break out of those patterns and be able to move your life forward to be a woman who can be seen as part of God's order. And if, if you're young enough, you can basically break out of this paradigm and go on to have a successful relationship with a man of character who will basically look to make you a wife. That's what you can learn in these books that I have on Amazon.com and other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And if you want to see me make more videos taking celebrities to the barbecue like Tia Maori, you can drop a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, a steam horror in the Hamptons. The aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this action-packed, all-new Esteem series adventure. Get your copy of Esteem, Horror in the Hamptons, in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker. The man who rules the world takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get your copy of John Haynes' Godbreaker in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and e-readers, e-Steam Cancel Vacation. Hell's aspiring angel takes on a social justice social media mob looking to cancel her in this all-new e-Steam series adventure. Get e-Steam Cancel Vacation in paperback and e-readers today. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.